Hi, it's Chester at Blue Peak and Computer Training. And in this video, we want to look at how to fill blank cells with the value in the cell above. All these need to be filled with the correct product group and all these cells need to be filled with the correct year. And I'm gonna look at four methods for achieving this with a simple formula with Power Query with a VBA macro and also how to do it within pivot tables. Let's start off with the first method. The trick here is to first of all, select all the blank cells. Now we don't want to have to do that manually. So there is a little workaround in Excel to allow you to do this. If you go to the home tab on your ribbon, find and select, go to special, select blanks, click on okay. It selects all the blank cells. Now what you will notice is that all the blank cells have a dark background, but this cell here, which was also selected, doesn't. And it has this kind of double border around it. And that's because it's the active cell. It is selected, but because it's the active cell, it looks slightly different. And if I start typing equal sign, it types into that cell. Now this cell wants to contain the value in the cell above, but I want that to be true for all the blank cells. To get all the selected cells to look at the cell above, what I need to do is replicate that formula throughout all the selected cells. And the way to do that is instead of pressing enter on your keyboard, use the key combination control enter. So if I go here, you can see that this says equals B3. It's always the cell above. Now we could run into problems where we have formulas in these cells, especially if we were to later sort the data or something like that. I think it would be wise to replace these formulas with values. That's pretty easy to do. First of all, we need to select all those cells. Control, shift down arrow key. Then I'm gonna copy and I'm gonna paste values. Paste up here and then values. Now, although I've got all the answers as I want, there's no longer formula in those cells. Okay, so that's the first method. The second method uses Power Query. And to use this method, just click in any cell in your data. To use Power Query, you will need a a later version of Excel. If you have an earlier version, you can install an add-in and that add-in is available on the Microsoft website. I'll leave a link to it in the description of the video below. What we're gonna do is go up to data here and then we're gonna go from table range and it asks you to confirm the range of cells that contains your data and whether you also have headers. I do, so I can just click on okay. That launches the Power Query Editor and what I need to do is select the two columns that I want to fill blanks within. Year is already selected, so I can hold down Shift and select the product group column. And I'll right click, fill, down. It does it for you. Then I need to load it back into Excel. Up here you'll see a close and load button. And it loads it onto a separate sheet. I end up with my original sheet and a separate sheet. Okay, let's look at the third method using a VBA macro now. The VBA is also in the description of the video below. So you just need to copy the code that I've provided there. First thing to do is to launch the Visual Basic Editor. And there's various ways you can do that, but I'm gonna get you to open up the Developer tab on your ribbon. If you can't see the Developer tab, right click on a tab you can see, customize the ribbon, and then tick this option here for Developer. Go to the Developer tab and you've got your Visual Basic button there. Now you need to make sure that you can see your Project Explorer. If you can't, go to View Project Explorer. The next thing you also need to make sure is that you have a Modules folder here. If you can't see that, go to Insert Module and that will create a module for you. I'm gonna go back to the first module and in this code window, you need to paste the code that I've provided. And what this code does is use a for each next loop to loop through all the cells that you've selected. And it will look at a cell and say, if it's blank, then fill down from the cell above. That's all it's doing. Now we can close that window. Then if we make a selection, I'll just select some cells. And then to run the macro, go to your macros button here. There's your macro, run it and it fills the cells for you. 
Now at the moment, this Mac Pro is only available when this workbook is open. If you want it to be available to all workbooks, you think it's generally useful to all sorts of work that you do, you will need to save the macro to the personal macro workbook. Now if I go back to the Visual Basic Editor, you can see in my Project Explorer, I have the personal macro workbook here. But if it doesn't appear in your Project Explorer, it's because you've never used it before. To get it to appear, you do a very simple little trick. You go up to Record Macro, right in any macro name and you need to make sure that you are storing the macro in the personal macro workbook it won't be that by default it'll be this workbook make sure you've selected personal macro workbook click on ok click in a cell doesn't matter where and then stop recording now if you go back to the visual basic editor you will see your personal macro workbook in this list if you go to the module within it there's the macro we created we don't need that anymore we can just delete it what you want to do in this module is paste in the relevant code that will fill blank cells. Then you can close this down. And then probably what I would do is I would add a button to my quick access toolbar or to the ribbon so that it was easier to run the macro. Now you can see that I have a button up here that does that. So if I select some cells here and press this button, you can see it does it for me. So how, how do I create that button? Well, what I do is I go to the customize button at the end of the toolbar. I go to more commands. Then what I want to do is select macros here in the choose commands from menu. And you'll see that we've got two versions of our macro, but one of them is very obviously saved in the personal macro workbook. I select that, click on add. Then I need to modify this so it looks a little bit better. Click on the modify button and you can choose a little image to appear on the button for this macro. Let's choose that little arrow there. And you can also write in a kind of screen tip for the button. Fill down into blank cells. Click on OK, and then I can click on OK. And there we are, there's my button. If I was to go to this sheet here, select some cells, click on that button, can see it runs the macro. The other thing you can do is add a button to the ribbon. To do that, right click on one of the tabs, customize the ribbon, and you may want to create a separate tab for your macros. For example, I'll select the last tab here, then I'll click on new tab, select the new tab, rename it, I'll call it macros, click on OK, then I'll select new group here, and I could rename that. I'll call this, for argument's sake, blank cells. Click on OK, and then I want to find my macro. So in the Choose Commands from menu, choose Macros. Choose my macro, make sure it's the personal macro workbook version. Click on Add, and again, I could choose a different image for the macro. This time I have to click on Rename to do that. Just choose that same arrow, give it a name, fill down into blank cells. Click on OK. Click on OK, and now I have a macros tab on my ribbon with my button. If I select some cells, fill down into blank cell, then you can see that it works. Now, one of the disadvantages of using a macro to achieve this is that the action can't be undone. So if you were to make a mistake and select the wrong cells, then you'd have to manually undo what the macro has achieved for you. Okay, let's look at the last example within a pivot table. I've got my pivot table set up. We're not gonna go through how to set up the pivot table, but you may have wondered where we've got this scenario, how you fill all the rows with, for example, the relevant product category, or in this example, with the relevant region. Now, what you do is you click into the column that you want to repeat the values in, go up to the design tab on your ribbon, and go to report layout, and you say repeat all item labels. And you can see that it does that for both the columns within your pivot table. Okay, so that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully you found it useful. It's a matter of choosing which of these options is best for you. Please subscribe and I'll see you next video.